Fall has finally arrived. Well, it's it's kind of been here for a while, but it's a little late here in California where I live. So I've been going around getting some pictures and video of the scenery. It's been quite lovely. Of course, it makes it even better when the leaves change color. Many of you know that when the air cools and winter nears, the leaves on trees disappear. It's not a saying, just happened to rhyme. I mean, maybe it's a saying, I think it is. So, we're covering some super interesting weather today, right? Like lightning, or space weather, or hail. No, actually, it's, it's about plants. Not even really neat plants, just like plants. I mean, I guess plants are neat to some, but I'm not a botanist, so... But why am I covering plants, you ask? Well, we know that weather affects plants. We know the leaves change color, leaves fall off, and rain helps plants grow and a lot of other factors. But did you know that plants affect the weather and that some plants even create their own? Let's start with one of the largest regions of plants in the world, the Amazon rainforest, also called the lungs of the earth. Now. A lot of plants affecting weather has to do with a thing called gutation. Gutation is the release of excess water a plant has, so that if they're soaked in the roots, they take that excess water and they excrete some of that and sap onto their leaves, which of course then evaporates, adding water vapor to the air and creating moisture. Of course, when plants do photosynthesis as well, they create even more water vapor, so that's just adding on to it. In a large area like the Amazon, the surplus of trees and plants all sweating and creating some water vapor actually cools down the air in the region. Not insanely, but it cools it down enough to where it makes it humid, which I'm not a fan of. I like my dry weather, thank you. But all of that moisture in the air helps in the creation of large clouds, which bring rain of course. Now it's not just like they just form directly over the forest, there's winds and a few other things that come into effect of course, and it's more like they help create them. But it's still really interesting. And if we're to dive in a little more, we can even discuss microclimates. A microclimate is basically a region that doesn't typically match the general climate of an area. Sometimes it does though. But San Francisco is a very good example of this. In some areas inside of the city of San Francisco, it can be 9 degrees cooler than the average in the city, you know, one block over, and it can be foggy there. Go down another few blocks, it can be sunny, no fog, and warmer. That's, that's just how the microclimates are in the region, and most of that's due to the hills in the city. The hills have a large varying effect on different neighborhoods and clouds and how the fog rolls and how the wind pushes the fog around. But it's really cool to see those kind of microclimates. So like in San Francisco and a lot of other regions on Earth, the Amazon and other typical tropical rainforests, they all have microclimates, just like anywhere else on Earth. Typically in the rainforest, the forest floor is a little cooler and quite damp, where, as on the canopy, the trees are going to be very hot. Of course, there's also the pressure in the air, the humidity, the moisture, and a few other things. Just remember that microclimates are the building blocks of climates, and they help determine a lot of factors in a region. Plants have a large role in some microclimates, especially in a large forested region. Plants and weather go hand in hand, and the same can be said for geography, space, and oceanography. It's a lot of how the world works. Everything in some way is interconnected and designed that way on this blue ball we live on. So, mushrooms. Mushrooms are very interesting. Generally, we don't really think about them much unless they're on pizza or if you're cooking with them or if you're doing... You know, they, they can come up quite a bit, actually. Something to take into account with these fun guys is that they create their own wind. Well, let's, let's first talk about how wind is created so you have an idea of what I mean here. To create wind, basically, uh, warm air rises and then cold air rushes to take its place. That's about it. That's just basics. Of course, there's a lot of other things into it. That's, that's a basic, basic about wind. There's so much more I could talk about, like there's pressures and systems and blah, 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 blah. But for now, basically, cold air rushes to where warm air is and pushes it out. It's kind of like that. Mushrooms meet those basics. By allowing most of the moisture on them to evaporate, mushrooms cool the air around them. This cool air pushes outward 
kind of like dry ice. Have you seen when dry ice is there and you have this fog that develops over the top and rolls off hugging the ground? It's a lot like that because cold air rushes outward, pushing away warm air. Mushrooms do this to spread spore. And so that future mushroom can grow in new areas. So they create their own wind. Let's go ahead and jump ship now, quite literally, and dive into the ocean. Let's take a look at some seaweed. Now you may ask how a plant underwater can impact the weather. Well, from recent studies, it's been found that when seaweed gets stressed, say by being exposed to sunlight during low tide or shift in water temperature, seaweed releases iodine oxide that it stores in itself and it builds up in the atmosphere. Iodine oxide can act as cloud nuclei. A nuclei of cloud is like the center. Basically, well, there's water vapor in the air and it attaches itself to this dust particle or iodine oxide or anything similar to that and freezes, developing into an ice crystal. Now, more water vapor lashes on, it freezes up until it gets heavy enough to form rain or actually snow first. And then as it falls through the atmosphere, it becomes rain. And that's kind of how a cloud works. Basically, water attaches to things, gets heavy, and falls. All very interesting stuff. Now, speaking of cloud nuclei, let's talk about pollen. I kind of mentioned it earlier. Now, something interesting about pollen, which has been believed to be too large to form cloud nuclei, but when it is hit by water, it fragments and breaks. Those smaller fragments of pollen can become small enough to be classified as cloud nuclei which may explain why your allergies get worse when rains come. I know it gets that way for my sister at least. So in conclusion, just to wrap up this simple little video, weather affects plants just as much as plants affect the weather. I know I've repeated this a lot, but it's how the world works. Many of our home's features are all interconnected from geography to climate to the depths of the ocean and even the reaches of space. Everything has an influence on the other. And when you start learning more about one area, you begin to see how it influences other areas. So I thought it'd be fun just to show you and give you an idea of how plants can affect the weather. There's of course a lot of other things I didn't cover today, but that's what you're here for. You're here to tell me if there's other things you'd like to see me cover or that you find interesting. Just leave some thoughts and suggestions down below and let me know if there's something I can do. And if you want to see future videos by me, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell icon. That way you can know, hey, I've uploaded a new video. Who knows? I'm going to cover some interesting stuff next week, and I hope you like it. It'll be a lot of fun. So thank you kindly for watching, and have a great day.